When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit of God bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Our first hymn this morning is 458, um, Seek Ye First, and the words are also in the bulletin. Welcome everyone. Um, we begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is Treaty 4 territory and we give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land for millennia before we arrived. The Cree, the Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota and the homeland of the Métis peoples. Um, you can sit for just a second, a moment. Um, do we have an announcement in regard to the, the friend, fence funding or the fence project or, Joan? didn't write it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be just fine. Okay. Um, if you've been reading the minutes, you've noticed there are, have been some issues at the rectory in the last year or so, which is the fence, which, is, which needs some repairs, and the steps at the rectory. The steps are becoming a safety, or have become a safety issue, and they need to be repaired. Now, we didn't have a quorum at our last vestry meeting, so we were unable to make a motion to, to uh, go ahead with the repairs. 
but we do have a quote for lumber that is needed to repair the steps and lumber and paint to repair the fence. The cost of the material is about $750 and likewise for the labor to do that. So um, we're thinking that once we have approved this that probably or we would like to have an appeal for um, which has been done in the past. We did that for the shingles on the church and for windows at the what is now the rental house and we're wondering if um, you would be willing to maybe donate uh, a small amount towards the repairs. Uh, you can put it into your envelope and just put uh, rectory repairs or whatever on the envelope and that would go towards the cost of doing this work. Thank you. That's okay. It is um, treated lumber was in the quote. The fence, of course, is paint, and uh, it, I don't think it'll be treated lumber, but yeah, just to, the thing is that uh, Wilma and Brian are concerned. The neighbors are doing their upkeep, and because this is church property, I think it's up to us to, to do upkeep on, on what, we, what belongs to us. So that was my suggestion. Maybe the <laughs> rest don't agree with it, but... Yeah, I have suggested the steps be done in composite, and I just asked Arl this morning, and he figures that the cost of the composite might be double what treated lumber would be to put on the steps. Yeah, and that, so. Maybe we'll see how successful the fundraising is, and maybe we can go for composite, because once those are done, they're done, so. So we'll just leave that with you uh, to pray over and discern where um, your giving lies. Um, so peaches are ongoing, and the deadline is, I'm pretty sure is August the 7th. Am I right? OK, I'm right. And so the deadline for having your forms and everything into Heather or Wendy is the 7th. Um, I will be away. Brian and I will be away. This is our last Sunday with you until September. You will be well taken care of for um, three Sundays. We have uh, Archdeacon Catherine will be here next Sunday. And in later August, you will have Archdeacon uh, Cheryl Toth will be here for two weeks in a row. And during this time um, that when there is no church in this building, um, remember that um, the cathedral, Emmanuel, is still online, and um, you're more than welcome. You've been invited to go to Trinity Lutheran or the United Church to worship with them. And the other thing is, is if you're at the Catholic Church, um, you can receive communion and be there with those folks as well. They will, they will welcome you for sure, I know that. Um, I've been told that from a couple different sources over there. So, um, so there is that. Um, the other thing is, is that we, ha our bishop is uh, probably in England by now, and as are most bishops from the world, and Lambeth Conference begins on the 26th. Please keep this conference in your prayers. I know it seems like a world away, and, but it's not. What they decide at Lambeth, while we don't have a situation, we do not have a pope, um, and Lambeth Conference gives guidance and tells us we think, and they can't say you must, but some of the things that they're deciding and voting on does have implications and repercussions around the world, including you. And so um, prayers for the bishops and all the staff and people that are there um, in Lambeth. They only meet every 10 years, and this time it's gone to like 14, I think. So anyway, please, um, please pray for the bishops and wise decisions and peace. Yes. Okay. 
We begin on page um, 185. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing hymn number 365. And we pray, O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. reading from the book of Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Dibliam, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel. For in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Lo Ruhamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have pity on the house of Judah and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow, or by sword, or by war, or by horses, or by horsemen. When she had weaned lo she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him lo Ami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it is, was said to them, you are not my people, it shall be said to them, children of the living God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 
And we pray Psalm 85, alternatively by full verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you have circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in, in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink, or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with the growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is Forgive Our Sins As We Forgive, number 614 in Common Praise.
He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give me whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there any one among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So what's in a name? We've all pr probably heard that phrase used many times. And if not, maybe we've heard, who's your family? In other words, where do you come from and who do you belong to? And by answering, people claim a place in a particular family or a particular extended family. It's a way to, they explain, a part of who they are and very often it also says something about how they behave or, or ought to behave. No matter what part of the country you're from, it's the same. There are always ways of claiming how you belong and of explaining how you act by just saying where you're from. Now some of you may be wondering what does talking about being part of a particular family have to do with today's gospel? If we look at the gospel only literally, probably not much. But if we look at it only literally, we could be tempted to say that this gospel gives it us two things. It gives us the exact words of a prayer to say, and then it tells us that all we have to do is pray hard enough and long enough and we can get God to give us what we want. Reading these few verses of this gospel can and has led to real frustration and heartbreak when people come up against hard things in life. I prayed and I prayed and I didn't receive what I asked God for. I, I knocked on God's door and God didn't answer. But we have to realize that this reading isn't a how-to reading. It isn't intended to give us a recipe for saying, a recipe of sayings that we can call on when we want or need something. We need to look deeper, to take a look at these few verses in context of this whole section of Luke's Gospel. And then we'll see that we're getting, to a, hot, getting a whole lot more. These few verses are part of a whole picture given to us in this gospel, a picture that tells us something very important about what it means to be part of God's family, to be the people of God. Remember the last two Sunday's gospels? Do you remember them? 
Well, the first, two weeks ago we heard about the parable of the Good Samaritan. The story reminded us that, that it's through our actions, our works, the way we treat others, that we show we understand we're living in the kingdom of God. We do things in a certain way because we understand the lessons Jesus taught about how those who claim to be his followers ought to act. Then last week, we heard again the story of Martha and Mary. Jesus was not putting one sister above the other. He was reminding that us that we must, support, <coughs> excuse me, we must support our actions by prayer. We must also constantly renew and strengthen ourselves to do God's will by listening to God's word and sharing together in prayer, just as we're doing right now. In today's gospel, Jesus is continuing his teaching on what it means to be his disciples. These disciples have heard Jesus teach others. They may have heard him speak to Martha and Mary. And now they want Jesus to teach them to pray. Here's where things get interesting. Our English translation says, when you pray, say. When you pray, say. But remember that what we read this morning is a translation of the original Greek text. If we go back to the original Greek text, we find that this verse could be translated, when you pray, you are saying. When you pray, you are saying. <clears throat> Excuse me. That gives us something more to think about. Remember that Jesus was talking to Jews, his own people. The prayer that we have come to call the Lord's Prayer is not an exclusively Christian prayer. It's certainly not a me and Jesus prayer. Any devout Jew could pray these same words today, and many did pray exactly this way in Jesus' time. Jesus was reminding his listeners that he, they already knew how to pray. They'd been doing it all their lives. He was making them conscious again of the outline or the form of a prayer that maybe had become too familiar. Has the Lord's Prayer become too familiar to us? Then he went on to give them an example of how prayer ought to affect us. We mustn't make the mistake of totally, totally turning the story of the neighbor and the bread into an allegory. We can't make God the neighbor and us the person who needs some food in the middle of the night into the only way to interpret this parable. My point being that the point of the story can also be that as members of God's family, we're bound to act in a certain way. Take a good look at the verses we've turned into contemporary hymns. The gospel says, ask and it will be given to you. Well, ask whom? Seek and you will find. Seek where? Knock and it will be opened. Knock where? Too often we casually say, God is the answer. And then we try to set things up as a me and Jesus vertical line. What would it be like, what would it be like if we all realized that we have to be part of the prayer? That if we're part of this family, then we need to be the ones who are asked and who are going to be the ones who are sought out by the needy. We are the ones who must open our doors. What would it be like if we really opened our hearts and our doors, not only to people in need outside the church, but to each other inside the church, giving and receiving the same kind of love that Jesus modeled for us? If we can say that this really is who we are, then we're working out what this gospel means for us as people of God who happen to be Christians, who happen to be Anglicans, or perhaps Lutherans, or United Church, or who, whatever denomination, living and working in this town. So this gospel may be doing for you what it was doing for Jesus' hearers. It may be reminding you that, yes, this is how we pray. We don't need to be doing anything outlandish or extraordinary. But we do need to keep our prayer in front of our eyes, as it were, we need to remember that God is the Holy One. 
That means that we need to remember that while God does provide for us, we need to reach out to others and mirror God to them. We need to forgive and be forgiven. We need to remember that however good we are, we still fail. We still fail. Because we're all sinners, every last one of us. And we need to remember that God forgives us. And if God forgives us and we are God's people, then ought we not we to forgive each other? When we are open to the unconditional forgiveness of God, then we will come to be known as the group of people who welcomes the stranger and the sinner. Isn't it exciting? I find that exciting. Really exciting. We belong to the whole of the Gospel of Luke. We might see ourselves sometimes as Samaritans, sometimes as Mary or Martha, even sometimes as priests and Levites, but above all, we just see that we're a community of faith. We're people of prayer living in the kingdom of God. This kingdom, as Jesus constantly taught, is here now. And by our baptism, we've promised to live a different life, a type of life God would live, the kind of life God did live in Jesus. A life that looks to God through praying together and reading the scriptures together, our prayer books, and through our sharing in the Eucharist. It's not an easy life, but as Paul said in Colossians, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. And so since we were talking about prayer, I thought it appropriate that I finish this sermon with a prayer. And so I chose to, clo to close, I choose to close today with the words from St. Ignatius of Lola, 16th century. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not ask for reward, save that of knowing we do thy will. Amen. And let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand, sit, or kneel, as is your custom, and as you are able for the prayers of the people. The response to the bidding, Holy God, protect us, is, and deliver us from all evil. Lord, we seek common union with you. We long to be rooted and grounded in you and your love. May your whole church show its unity and love in you. We pray for all who are learning to pray, all who are being taught to meditate and to contemplate in your presence. We pray for religious communities, the spiritual guides and counselors. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for our clergy and churches, for Linda, our primate, Sidney Black, indigenous bishop, Greg, our Metropolitan, Helen, our Bishop, Mike, our Dean, Wilma, our Archdeacon, Barb, our Deacon, Brian, our Honorary Assistant. For the clergy, lay leaders, congregation, and ministries of the parish of All Saints, Catepua. For the Right Reverend Stephen London, Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Edmonton. For the Dean, Council and the congregations of the East Central Area of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. For Pastors Dan and Nick and the Congregation of Faith Lutheran Church. For the Episcopal Church of Sudan. For our Companion Diocese of Litchfield and Mainga. For our Ecumenical Partners in the Lutheran, Anglican, Ukrainian Catholic, Roman Catholic Covenant. Holy God, protect us and deliver us from all evil. We pray for the emergency services, for relief agencies and for the Estevan Fire Rescue, for all who risk their lives and give their lives to others. We pray for all who are seeking to bring healing and peace to our world, all who are working for unity and harmony. We pray for the people of Ukraine and the laying down of weapons. Holy God, protect us and deliver us from all evil. We give thanks for all who have encouraged us and given us confidence for all who have helped us to develop our talents and abilities. We pray for teachers and all who are involved in the development of people. We ask you bless our homes and our loved ones, remembering our church families, Shona Moore and her sons Austin and Nolan, Tom and Beth Moore and their daughters Shona, Jackie and Simone and their families. Holy God, protect us and deliver us from all evil. We ask you to guide and strengthen all who are fearful. We pray for any who are awaiting a doctor's diagnosis, all who are awaiting operations or admissions to hospital. We pray for the loved ones and those who are ill and all carers. We bring before you any we know by name and who are ill especially, Lyle, Robert, Terry, Robert Adams, Gail Brandon, Jody Bryant, Mackenzie Delaney, Aaron Ducart, Sherry Ducart, Frank Elberg, Nadine Elson, Wanda Fries, Dorothy Gates, Dave Genter, Bob Haynes, Glory Haynes, Alan Hodges, Debbie Hubick, Brian Joseph, Pastor Janet Costina, David McDonald, Michaela McPherson, Leanne McCarthy, Dorianne McGillis, Marge Miller, Arnold Newton, Dale and Walter Purvis, Julie Ricks, Les Saxon, Kim Smith, Candy Smythe, Wanda Stang, Lisa Vandeveld, Tom Wright, Mavis Zinovich, and those who we name silently before you now. Holy God, protect us and deliver us from all evil. Lord, we trust in you and in your power to save. You are our strength in times of weakness, 
our hope in times of darkness. We ask you to bless all our loved ones departed, remembering today Barry Holmes, Richard Aspenleiter, B. Lukey, Eileen Byers, Marlene Rabowski, Agnes Clayton, Rose Romanek, Clinton Preddy, Lorraine Smith, Bernice Summers, and keep them in eternal life. Holy God, protect us and deliver us from all evil. Almighty God, our hearts long for you, our spirits yearn for you. We desire to know your presence. We seek your face. Open our eyes to behold your coming. Cleanse our minds to accept your presence. Touch our hearts to accept your love that we may give ourselves in you, in love to you as you have given yourself to us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And we exchange a sign of that peace with one another. And our hymn is... Let there be light found in your bulletin. No, not for, not for. Let us pray. 
God of grace, accept all we offer you this day as we look toward the glory you have promised. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Eucharistic Prayer 5. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life, which comes from you. By your power, you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves, but we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to the world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. We give you thanks and praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. And as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Breaking of the bread number one. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. So 
So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been to the sacrament often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of grace, we have received the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son. May your love poured into us bring us to your promises. We ask this in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say the doxology. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Our last hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And just a reminder that we have coffee. Um, Alan's bean and made coffee. And so uh, I invite you all to come and join us.